Amen. So starting with verse 9, he says, oh, verse 8, we cover that. It says, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Verse 9, in this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Uh, verse 8, talking about God is love. I read this last week. I'm going to read it again. And in God is love. He's an infinite fountain of kindness to every human being. Do you believe that? Do you believe God is kind to everybody? Then I'm going to ask you this question. If we've got his spirit in us, his spirit that's holy, should that not be reciprocated through us to be kind to everybody as well? The answer is yes. Amen. And he cannot hate because he's love. Because he's love. He cannot hate. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. He sends his rain on the just and the unjust. That's a hard one to understand, but it's like God is God. And if as long as a person's alive, there's hope for them. We should never write them off and cast them off and judge them and kick them out. We, we do have to have parameters with people, and we, do have to, we don't cast our pearls before swine, but we never quit loving people. Never. Sometimes we have to make hard decisions. You have to do it. They have to do it on the job. Sometimes they have to do it in church. Sometimes you have to do it with your kids. Proverbs talks about that with your kids. He says, don't keep, uh, what's the word, uh, enabling them. You're just going to keep doing it over and over. There comes a time that you have to say with your, and I love you, and my, my heart wants to do this, but my mind and the word of God says no. But I still love you. They don't understand that. But that's what I'm talking about. We still love them. Amen. And uh, he, God has made no human being just to put them in hell. He gets no glory in seeing people go to hell. He really doesn't. But he, and, and he's never rendered it impossible. By any degree for any fallen soul to ever find mercy, it is not impossible if you got the right attitude, the right desire, the right hunger to find the mercy of God for your soul. I don't care how far you've gone. Now, if he turned you over to reprobate, but we're not dealing with reprobates. We're talking about those that, that have a knowledge of God, they love God, they believe God, and the devil will tell you you can't, but I'm telling you, the Lord says you can find him. Amen, amen, amen. And that's his, and that ties in with verse 9. That's the proof of his love to the human race is the birth of Jesus Christ who tasted death for every man. And we understand that we couldn't be saved without the Lord doing what he did. And verse 9, he was manifested. Uh, the mission of Jesus Christ, church, was the proof that God could give. And he did. His infinite love to the world. And we're going to look a little bit tonight about the love of God. It is powerful. And that we, would, that we might live through him. The whole world, we were sentenced to death. Because of sin. There's that word sin. And every individual, the Bible says, we were dead in trespasses and sins. The Lord came to die for the world and to quicken every believer that all might live to him who died for them and rose again. We mentioned that Sunday, if you were here. And I mentioned that scripture in John about, uh, it says, when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. And I, I showed you in the scripture where that word was used one time in the Greek, and that was the word then. And it's the same word in Genesis 2, 7, when, when he created Adam, and Adam's laying there just a whatever, like a corpse. And then God breathed into his nostrils the same word, and life came to that corpse. That's what he's talking about here. We were dead in sin. We were dead, Brother Brimer. And then the Bible says when he, you receive this, the Holy Ghost, it will quicken us. Isn't that amazing? The word of the Lord is so cool. It really is. When you see things like that, I just, it's just, it is so amazing. You almost wants to just fall to your knees and just lift your hand and say, God, you are so awesome. His word, and he's so far out there. He's just way out there. And like David said one time, why are you even mindful of man? You got so much going for you, but it's called love. 
And when you see how much God loves you, let me ask you, don't raise your hand. I'll raise it for all of us. Is there things we've done in our life that he had reason not to love us? Don't you wish you could have that kind of love for everybody else? That's what we strive for, Brother Brimer. We strive for this perfect love. We will not obtain total perfect love like that, but we will strive for it, and we can get stronger and stronger and have that kind of, wouldn't you love to have that? The same love that he loves us, and that's what he wants, to reciprocate it to somebody else. Praise God. And so, and that's why John 3, 16, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If who believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 10, <clears throat> it says, herein is love. Not that we love God. This is crucial. Understand this. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Propitiation means he took the place for us. He took our sin and, and bore it on the cross so that we could have eternal life. Uh, and listen to this and, and verse 10, not that we love God and that he was, and understand, not, and not that God was induced. Listen to this. Not that God was uh, persuaded or that God was influenced to give up Jesus Christ to bear our sins, to be their propitiation, because the Bible says every one of us were enemies against God. And yet Christ died for our ungodly souls. I want to read a verse. So understand that. It wasn't twisting God's arm and nobody made him love us. Nobody. It's his nature to love. Listen to this about where we were at. This is Romans 5, 6 to 11 in the Amplified. While we were still helpless. Every one of us is in this category at one time in our life. While we were still helpless powerless to provide for our own salvation, you could not save yourself. That's what I mean. Everybody had a death sentence. And I'm, I'm, I'm being truthful. If Jesus didn't do what he did, nobody would be saved. That's the way it is. And at the right time, Christ died as a substitute for ungodly people. Now, it is an extraordinary thing for one to willingly give his life even for an upright man. Though perhaps for a good man, one who is noble and selfless and worthy, someone might even dare to die. But God clearly shows and proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were sinners, he died for us. And well, how, how, can, how does that God's love? Think of somebody that you would have a hard time even shaking their hand and smiling, let alone die for them. We all have those in our, in our memories. We have forgiven them. Unfortunately, there's people that can't, they will, look the, they will walk the other way from another Christian. I don't understand that. You know, there's the old saying, Sean, if you can't get along down here, you think you're going to get along up there? There's a lot of truth to that. It's called forgiveness. It's like he forgave us. But he died. Think of, the, think of the people you hear on the news and you read on the Internet and, and you see the horrible, some of what these people have done to kids. And it's like you can't even read it or you don't even want to hear it. Could you go die for that person? That'd be tough, wouldn't it? Could you die for a, a, a guy that is a child molester and kills kids and, and does horrible things to them? Could you die for that person? Guess what? Jesus Christ died for that person. That's hard to imagine, isn't it? But he did. That's called love. Isn't that amazing? And that's the love that we strive for. That's why don't look at the, the end. It's a process striving to get to the end. I've encouraged people that come to the Lord. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Many people have come to church. They, they start living for God. And all they look at is those that have been in this for four or five decades. And they think, I can't be like that. Well, you're looking at something that hasn't happened yet. And if God wants you to be like that individual, he will give you the grace through process and time to get to that place. 
just like we grow naturally. Anderson, where's he at? He's, he's, he's not going to wake up tomorrow and be 25 years old and weigh 220 pounds. He's enjoying how old he is, almost one. He's enjoying being that. Enjoy just living for God and always strive to get more love of God in your life. Love for your fellow man. And if you look at it like, I got to go from here to there, and it's just a leap to there, you probably won't do it. If you look at it as a process and God helping me and you're building up to it, it will. And I, I've, it's like they say, uh, and I was guilty of that, and I'm working on that, and I really work on it. That's a real flaw that I have. When we go somewhere, I just want to go from here to there. <laughs> I don't want to enjoy the journey. You might know what I'm talking about. Brother Barnett, you're hanging your head and she's saying yes. So I don't know. You know, if we go to Indiana, I just want to leave here and get there. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff to look at between here and there and develop. And if you look at it as I just got to psych up to do this, you're missing it. And if you do that with trying to perfect the love of God on your life, you're going to miss something. It's a process. In fact, Isaiah spoke about things in living for God, Sean. He said it's here a little and there a little. Line upon line, precept upon precept. It's just a slow process, folks. Just like Anderson's growing slowly. You never see somebody grow. You can sit here and stare at that boy for two hours and you will not see him grow. And that's the way our spiritual life is, church. But don't quit striving. Lord, I want to be more like you. I want to love like you love. And I know it's not going to be a transition like that. And that's what we want. We're in such a give me now, give me, give me, give me now. We don't want to. But living for God, God does not conform to the ways of the world. It's his way. And this is his way. And it's a, it's a great thing to, to put in our life and to implement. Amen. So listen to that. He said, but clearly, verse 8, but clearly God shows and proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were sinners, he died for us. And since he did, we've now been justified. We are declared free of the guilt of sin by his blood. Isn't that wonderful? If you're having a bad day and, and, and kind of whatever, kind of pause maybe and get through these attitudes we get and say, Lord, I've got so much to be thankful for. I really do. And we do, church. Amen. But we all get these things. It's just called life, I think. And it says, how much more certain is it that well, we, we will be saved from the wrath of God through him? For if we were enemies, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. He uses the word enemy. Not just a stranger, but an enemy. We fought God. And he still loved us. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing to me. The stuff we have done and the Lord is so forgiving. I, 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 it, it almost, it's, like, it's like that scripture, Brother Barnett, in Corinthians that says the goodness of God will lead men to repentance. Will draw them and, and, and it's like enough when you've done things against God and you realize he keeps forgiving you, there comes a time when you say, I can't do this anymore. You are so good to me, God. I cannot do this to you anymore. And then you'll change. You're not going to get perfect. If you were, you wouldn't be here. But we don't want to say that's too big. It's too hard to get. It's not too hard to get. Just take it a little at a time. That's the way he wants us to do it. At least we're striving in the right direction. And we're going toward that. Amen. <clears throat> While we were enemies, he reconciled to God through the death of his son. It is much more certain, having been reconciled, that we will be saved. Amen. He didn't, he didn't reconcile us to leave us hanging and just tempt us. And, you know, ha, 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 ha. he did this to save us, Brother Brimer, completely in heaven. From that consequence of sin, and that's the big problem is sin. And by his, by his life, that is, we will be saved because he lives today. He conquered death. And he rose. Amen, amen. 
Not only that, but we also rejoice in God, rejoice in his love and his perfection through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we, we have now received and enjoy our reconciliation from God. Amen. Let me, you, we want, what time is it? We got plenty of time. Let me tell you, let me tell you, acute when we're talking about mother-in-laws, and I don't mean this, but it's kind of funny. Can I tell you a real funny one real quick? Lighten the load. It was so cute. I love it. This, this husband and wife and his mother-in-law went to the Holy Land. And when we're over there, his mother-in-law died. So they went to the funeral parlor. And they said, we can send her home for $5,000. And you can have the funeral there. Or we can have a barrier here for $150. What do you want to do? And so the guy said, well, send her home. Here's the 5000 And he said, I just got to ask you a question. Why would you spend $5,000 to send your mother-in-law home when you could bury her here for 150 in the Holy Land? He goes, well, about 2,000 years ago, a guy died here and rose on the third day, and I don't want to take any chances. <laughs> oh, my. Anyway. We'll keep going. Somebody said, okay. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So let's keep going. <clears throat> Verse 10, we got that. Verse 11, he says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And you don't do it by grunting and straining. You learn how to do it by just, it's in me to do this. It just is. Somebody say amen. amen. That's verse 11 or verse 10. Uh, no, verse 11. If he loved us, we should also. And you don't do it without considering it. Well, should I love them? <laughs> That's crucial. You don't think about it. You don't have to reason it. You just do it. Can I get a? Thank you. And this is serious stuff. This is what this is what God expects from His people. Well, that's too much. I don't think it's too much for our end result. And you know what? Actually, he's, God's got a plan for all this. It's just like you train your kids things when they're growing up so that they'll be a better person in life, right? God in his word is, is helping us in our spirit. He's more worried with our spirit than anything in our natural. Believe me. He takes care of the natural, but he wants us to go to heaven. And so these things in his word, things like this, well, I need to love. That's to help us. Because if you don't keep loving, you'll start getting a resentment, bitterness. You may even quit living for God. And then what have you got? It's just the way to make us a stronger Christian, Christ-like to make it. This is, like the, this is like God teaching his children, us, how to live to be an effective Christian. Just like you train your kids to be an effective person when they get older. It's the same thing. We don't resent it and we don't miss nothing. That's just the way it is. You teach your kids, you know, to, to do things and, and that because you want them to be a good person. And this is what the word of the Lord does. If we accept it and make the appropriate changes, we will be a good Christian. And I want to make it. I don't know about you, but I want to make it. Amen. So we just do it. Verse 12. Everybody says, I, I preached a message years ago called Nike religion. Just do it. Just do it. And uh, it'll be all right. Praise God. So verse 12, no man has seen God at any time. He's not a father sitting in heaven on a throne with long gray hair. He is the father, but God is spirit. You'll never see him, but he's real. That's why the angels look down from heaven at, at us, as the Bible says, inquisitive. They're curious of us because we are living for a God we've never seen by faith. And that's why the reward is so great, church. You got to do a lot of it by faith. You just do it by faith. 
And that you got to have faith. You're saved by grace through faith. That means I don't need proof. You just, you just know. You, you just know God's real. Amen. And his word does not lie. Praise God. Listen to this. His love is perfected in us. It's, it's carried out until we're complete in him when we are transformed out of this body. We strive for that perfection. Our love for each other is the, is the proper exponent. That is the real critical part of this thing. Uh, his, his, that our love for each other is the critical exponent in this equation of our love to him reigning in our hearts. If you say, I have the love of God in your heart, then you will show that by having love to somebody else. That's exactly what that means. It's not that we're absolutely perfect, Brother Brimer, or even that we're going we're, we're gonna to get there while we're here. But we strive, and this love to others carries out our love toward him. You say you love him, then love his people. You love those, you just love them. Somebody say you just love them. Amen. I can't get that across enough. Because without this, our love to him would have not accomplished what it was adapted and designed to do. God wants his people. Do you have things you don't want your kids to do when somebody comes over? Is that correct? Do you, so you lay the law down? Now we're having company, and I expect God expects his children to do certain things. Amen, he does. And one of them, well, I'm 60 years old. It doesn't matter. You're still his child. And he expects his children to love. And if you have a hard time with that, I encourage you, again, I encourage you, go to the Lord. Lord, and this is how your prayer on this kind of a wise, Lord, I see that. It's right. And I want that. But I have a hard time, maybe from a childhood or whatever, I want to get like that. Help me. Help me. And guess what? He will help you. If you say that with very sincere heart, he will help you. Because I know a lot of people have a lot of walls that they've come through, but the Lord wants all your walls of having of being able to love somebody, he wants those broken. He really does. And I can assure you, you don't have to have a wall with God. He'll never hurt you. Amen. Somebody say praise God. Amen. So let's keep going. Uh, verse 13. <clears throat> Hereby know, again, and it's trying to be perfected in us. You're not going to get completely like the Lord and go die on a cross somewhere. You're striving and you're growing in love and it will increase as time goes on. It really will. Praise God. Hereby know this that we hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us his spirit. God gave us his spirit. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Well, what's that spirit supposed to do? Well, I'm glad you asked. The fruit of the spirit. And it doesn't say fruits of the spirit. It says fruit. This one fruit encompasses all these areas. Don't just pick and choose the ones you like. You need to have them all. Love. The first one is love. Joy. He wants you to have joy. Peace. Be long-suffering. The Lord's long-suffering. Gentle. Goodness. Have faith. Be meek. Be temperate. Against there is no law. You can have all that you want. Those are what, and when you have these, because the Bible said in another place, Tony, he said, you'll know them by their fruit. Not what they say, what they produce. Amen. You don't go by and, and see a, an apple tree, and the apple tree, when you walk up to it, says, hey, I'm an apple tree. You know that apple tree by how? That's fruit. And you are known by your fruit. You don't know what people say when you're not around. <laughs> and that's what the Lord wants us to. He just wants us, in a, in a nutshell, here it is in a nutshell. 
The Lord came to die for mankind. He filled us with his love, and he just expects that love to continue in this earth through his children, through his bride, through his church. He's not here in flesh anymore, but he wants his spirit to still radiate through his people, and other people gravitate to that. Amen. You've walked around people, you've seen people, and you know they have. I've seen, my, you, my wife will tell you, we see people in Tulsa, and I say, where you go to church? You can just tell they're one of us <laughs> by looking at them. You can just tell there's something about them. They're different. Then we get to talking, and we just, one of them here recently that was in St. Louis. They was down here visiting somebody. You can just, you just see them. You know what I'm talking about? And people will gravitate to that. That's how we're his witnesses on the earth. Amen. Let me keep going. In verse 14, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. They did. Some of the writers of the Bible saw him in person. Verse 15, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, he and God. Not just with words. He's confessed and he's not feeling good. But you confess not just with words, but from your heart. He's really confessing. That's all right. That's what he was. He got what he wanted. But there's a lot of truth to that. Everybody says, I believe. Do you? If you believe, you won't do some of the things you know God doesn't like. Hear that. I believe, but I'm not going to. I know the Lord talks about this in his word, and I know he doesn't like it, but I'm going to keep doing it. But I still believe. Let me, let me, I, let me, I, this is, this is cool. Y'all going to love this. Listen to this. Are you listening? The Bible says the devils believe in one God and tremble. They believe and tremble. But guess what, Robin? They believe, but those devils can't be saved. Let that sink into your cranium, church. Just because you believe, you can still be lost. That's powerful, isn't it, Sean? Well, I believe, yeah, but you still got to do something with that belief. Otherwise, it's called deception. Deception is I believe, but I'm not going to do anything about it. That's when you're a hearer and not a doer. And I've used that illustration so many times. I believe that I got to pay the church's water bill this month by the 15th. I believe it. I got it in the office in there. I know I do. But guess what? If I don't pay it, guess what? You're going to be washing your hands in air. Just because you believe does not make it happen. The devils believe, and it shakes them to their core. But they're not going to be saved. I like that scripture. I like that. I don't even know where I heard that, but it's cool. So keep that in mind. Just because you believe, you've got to put action to your belief. That's why we have church. It really is. Church is, 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 is coming from the world to like precious faith, to love, to strength, to encouragement, to, to worship the Lord. You bring your offerings. You, 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 just, you just take time out of life and be in the presence of God. It's just respect. It really is. It's just respect. And then you learn things. And then we just keep doing this. And you know what, church? Listen, one of these days we're going to have a last service here. Either you're going to die, which is a promotion. We was talking to Sister Price. You know, it said today, he said, you know, how come the Lord's let me live so long? I heard a guy on the radio today. It was funny. He, he one of the teachers, and he said, I talked to my, my mom. I call her every Saturday night. And he said recently, he said, I called her, and she's 102. And he said recently, she said, son, I just don't know why God won't come and get me. I guess you forgot my address. <laughs> but, you know, and folks, Sister Price, she wants to go home. Is she going to be missed? Absolutely. But she feels like she's not any kind of a purpose, so to speak. I know. And it is not. It is a promotion. A huge promotion. That's if you know the Lord. If you don't, well, 
That's a different story, but that's not this Bible study. So let's keep going. I'm going to be done here in just a minute. Verse 16. <clears throat> and we have known and believed the love of that God has toward us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. That's not a mystery. Uh, he dwells in love, love to God and to man. If you have the love of God, not just, well, I love God, but I don't love man. You can't do that. And we're going to find that out here in a minute. Verse 17, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. When you got your love is perfected in God, church, you have no fear of the wrath of God. You don't fear judgment. You don't fear hell. You don't fear a lake of fire. That's what it's talking about. You, your love is made perfect with God. You are, you are living for the Lord. You're trying your best to do what his word says. And if you fall short, you repent and you get back up and you get back in the game. But your love for him is perfect. That means I will not fear being lost. You can't. That's, that's, that's double-minded. And a double-minded person is, is a divided interest. You can't say I love God and still fear that you're going to hell. That's a divided mind. You got to make up your mind. And my mind is made up. I'm going to go to heaven by the grace of God. And I love God and I don't worry about him going to put me to hell. And if you do have that feeling, it's because you're guilty of something. Somebody say amen. Love is not an affection that produces fear. The love which we have for a parent, a child, a friend, there is no fear. I don't fear my wife. <laughs> I, Tony doesn't fear me. I don't fear Riker. I don't fear Sean. I don't worry that he's going to come beat me up someday. We don't worry about God going to put us in hell. We love him. We love God, and we're striving to, to, to serve him, be everything we can for him. And if a man has perfect love to God, he would have no fear of anything. For what would he have to dread? No fear of death. You had nothing to dread beyond the grave. It's guilt that makes people fear what is to come. That's another reason we have church. If people are slipping the line and missing the mark and the word convicts them, that means it's saying you're doing something wrong, you have an opportunity to get back where you need to be. Isn't that wonderful? I promise you, everybody that's living for God any length of time has had a church service that got them back where they needed to get. I know what I'm talking about because you're, there's more strength in numbers. You're in the body of Christ. There's strength. You may come up and get prayer, whatever. There's strength in the church. It really is. It makes, it's, it's guilt that makes people fear what is to come. But he whose sins are pardoned, and they are, and your heart is filled with the love of God, there's nothing to dread in this world or the world to come. The, heavens in, the, the angels in heaven, the ones that didn't get kicked out and fell, they have always loved God and one another. That's amazing. They have nothing to fear. They don't fear one another up there. They have nothing to dread in the future. The redeemed in heaven that are rescued from all this danger, they're filled with the love of God. Heaven's just full of love. They have nothing to dread. And that same love should operate in the church through his children one at a time. Everybody understand that? That's what we strive for. We need to strive for that. It delivers the soul now from all apprehension of what is to come. But perfect love cast out fear. That's verse 18. There is no love in, there is no fear in love. Perfect love cast out fear because fear hath torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Perfect love cast out fear. That love is allowed to exert its proper influence on the soul. The love of God wants to help us. It's to deliver us from all alarms of the what's to come and, and fret and worry and anxiety. That God gets no glory out of that. Perfect love has a way to eliminate that. And, and, and I'm even working on something. I, I've always tried to have things in my mind, Sean, for at least a week or two in advance. That's just me. But anymore, Robin, I've really come. It's just a few weeks ago, Lord really showed me. You need to quit thinking about 
tomorrow. You need just to worry about today. Tomorrow has enough problem of its own. And I'm really adopting that theory, and it's, it's really helping me a lot, Brother Brimer. Why fret for something tomorrow? I've got to do a funeral tomorrow. I don't, that's not the most favorite thing of any minister. I'm not complaining, but you know what? I had not thought one thing about it. I'll deal with it tomorrow morning when I wake up. There's strength in that. Because if I was worried about that, and worried, I couldn't deliver what the Lord wants me to deliver to you tonight. Because I'm fretting about tomorrow. You see how that works? Worry about tomorrow. I wake up tomorrow, and he'll give me the grace for tomorrow. He's not going to give me the tomorrow today. He's going to give my grace that I need today, and tomorrow he'll give me the grace for tomorrow. Isn't that amazing? And that's the love of God. Praise God. Praise God. And it, you shouldn't fear anything. Fear has torment. It's painful and a very distressing emotion. Men suffer from fear, poverty, loss, bereavement, sickness, death, future. But the true, the love of God, which furnishes an evidence that God can deliver us from all this fear. Somebody say praise God for that. And he that fears is not made perfect in love. That's what his word says. Don't fear anything. And you will not fear when your love is perfect with God. Why would you have anything to fear if he's got your life in his hands? He said, I'm in the, my people are in my hand and nobody can snatch them out of my hand. If, who, if the Lord be for us, who can be against us? What do you got to fear? You should have no fear if your love is with the way of speech which God wants it. And he that fears is not made perfect. If you have fear, you need to ask the Lord to help you get rid of that fear and let your love develop to him like he wants it to be, and he will help you. Praise God. And I'm going to conclude this. I think we're about done. Yes, we're about done. Yeah, we're, praise God. Verse 19, <coughs> we love him because he first loved us. First. Verse 20, two more. If, and this is important. This is a very important scripture. This is the word of the Lord. It doesn't lie. If a man say, I love God, and he hates his brother, he's a liar. I love God, man. I hoop and holler. I dance with the best of them. I run around the church. I'll put $5,000 in the offering play every time it's around. But I hate that man. You are a liar. That's some strong words, isn't it, Brother Brimer? But a lot of people, they, they think, and I'm going to tell you, in fact, one scripture come to my mind. He says, if you've got something against your brother, you better go make it right. Put that gift on the altar till you make it right. Because that's a stench in God's eyes when you claim to be a child of his and how you love and worship him. And you can't even love a brother. There is something wrong. There really is, and he doesn't like that. Somebody say, man, just make it right. Humble your, there you go, that humbling yourself. Nobody wants to humble yourself. Humble yourself and make it right. Because Because it's going to be made right. It's better to be made right down here than to be made right over there and you lose your soul. Did everybody catch that? It's better to be made right. Because, you know, the, and I'm, I'm trying to wrap up here. I really am. Give me a couple more minutes. It's like Revelation said. Every knee is going to bow before him. You can bow now and humble yourself and get right with God or live in, and live in pride and arrogance and fear, but you're going to bow one of these days. A wise man will realize that and say, you know, <laughs> I think I will humble myself <laughs> and get right with God because if I wait till then and he makes me bow before him, I'm in trouble. My future is not very hopeful then. Praise God. And that's just the love of God. His love is beyond our comprehension. In the last verse, it says, <clears throat> I'll read that one in the, in the last one. If a man say, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. How can you say you love God whom, you've, whom, whom you haven't seen and you can't love your brother who you've seen? That doesn't make any sense. Whom he hath not seen. If he love not his brother... It's proof that the love of God is not in you. I don't care who you are. I don't care. You can talk in tongues like a Chinaman. 
The Bible says the love of God's not in you. And if you have not the love of God, you cannot love God. And this is a very important sentence. Listen to this. This is crucial. For God can be loved only through the influence of his own love. Is that not cool? It's true. God, Tony, listen. God can be loved only through the influence of his own love in your heart toward fellow man and him. That's why if you've got the real love of God in your heart, you will love somebody and everybody. Everybody catch that? It will automatically be there. It's like getting the Holy Ghost. How do I get the Holy Ghost? Don't worry. When you get it, you'll know it. You can't plan for it. It just happens. And love will automatically just be released. And that's the only way you can really love God is when his love is in you. You can't shut it off and pick and choose who you're going to love, but you're going to love God. It does not work that way. He loves you. You love everybody. And you will love God. Somebody say amen. Amen. The man who hates his fellow man does not love God. He who does not love God does not have the love of God in him. And he who has not the love of God in him can neither love God or man. The last verse 21, and this commandment have we from him that he who loves God love his brother. Isn't that amazing how the words look? He who loveth, E-T-H, continually loves God, you will love your brother. Praise God. Eight o'clock. I told my wife I'm, <laughs> told my wife I'm shortening my messages. Praise God. Anybody got any questions? You can't love God too much. And it's really church. It's, this is the way it's supposed to be. Somebody say, it really is. He didn't just fill us, Brother Barnett, with his spirit and just wait on the rapture. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. We, we, to whom much given and much is required, and it's going to be a very well reward. Let's stand and ask the Lord to go with us. And, uh,